Good morning. I'd like to begin by thanking you for the invitation to address you this morning. I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but I've recorded this presentation and I hope you'll find it interesting. I'd like in particular to, to thank Professor Sajnani for his invitation and also for agreeing to be a judge in the India Responsible Tourism Awards this year. Tourism is a social construct. It's what we, the consumers and producers, make it, and therefore we can change it. And we can change it for the better. We can make tourism better by the way in which we organise it, by the way in which we behave as tourists. If you put Responsible Tourism now into Google, you come up with over 7 million hits. It's growing in popularity very rapidly, but of course with the danger of popularity comes the danger of greenwashing. And we are seeing a lot of greenwashing now around the concept of responsible tourism. Sustainable development means different things to different people, and we find a lot of people talking about sustainable and responsible tourism. Sustainability is still very abstract, too general, we can't define it. And people we know engage with issues, with particular issues, the things which are relevant and important locally. It means making changes and it requires engagement, but it's this linking of sustainable and responsible that causes concern for me. We're really making terrible progress. They're not the same thing, sustainable and responsible tourism. Sustainability is abstract, whereas responsibility is about taking responsibility for achieving change. It's about the difference between an abstract aim and what you do to achieve it. Essentially, Responsibility drives sustainability. We need to make sustainability happen. So why did we choose to focus on responsibility? It's about responding and acting. It requires action. It's critical to creating change, acknowledging and owning up to the problems and taking responsibility for making changes, finding solutions. And it's free. We can all take as much of it as we can have. So be responsible because it implies recountability. We are to blame if we don't do it. We cannot escape, as Lincoln said, we cannot escape the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today. The ostrich problem is we look to others to solve the problem rather than taking responsibility and responding to the challenges that surround us. And deal with them. So what is responsible tourism? I think it's fairly simple. It's about identifying the issues which matter and addressing them through tourism. It's a triple bottom line, economic, social and environmental to tourism management. It's a way of traveling. It offers a better experience. It's a movement. It's diverse. It varies from place to place. Across India, you see different kinds of responsible tourism in different cultural and natural environments. And critically, it's characterized by transparency. And that's where the academy becomes so important in laying out what's been achieved and what's not been achieved in particular cases. It requires the acceptance of responsibility and the willingness to take action. It's about using tourism to make better places to live in. It's about using tourism to achieve sustainable development through tourism, using tourism rather than being used by it. You often hear further east in Asia, the aphorism, tourism is like a fire. You can use it to cook your food or it can burn your house down. It's your choice, but you need to be careful to use it rather than to have it burn your house. So sustainability is an aspiration. It's vague. It's incapable of operational definition, and it's generally inoperative. I often see it as a fig leaf. Whereas responsibility is what you do to achieve the aspiration. The state or, or fact of having a duty to deal with something, the state or fact of being accountable or to blame for something. They're very different concepts, should not be joined together, particularly where responsible tourism is put second after sustainable tourism. Responsible tourism is what potentially drives sustainability and sustainable tourism. So what of the Responsible Tourism Awards that we've been running since 2004, when the Tourism for Tomorrow Awards were cancelled by British Airways? 
They were built on the Cape Town Declaration of 2002 and in 2022, just next year, there'll be a big event at WTM London in November next year to showcase the best examples of responsible tourism around the world. And India is going to be a very big part of that. It's close enough now that we know where the leading examples are globally of responsible tourism. India doesn't have a monopoly of the best examples, but it does have very many of the very best. And I pick out CGH Earth Hotels, Lemon Tree Hotels, Village Ways, Kerala and its responsible tourism mission, and many more examples of businesses and destinations of local and state governments across India, which have committed to responsible tourism and made a reality of it. So, running continuously since 2004, the awards have now become a very large family with awards in Africa, Latin America and India since 2017 and next year, additionally in East Asia and Europe. These genuinely are becoming global awards. Our judging criteria are that they need to win. You need to have the evidence. It needs to be record. It needs to be something which is innovative that others might choose to replicate. It needs to show influence. It needs to show sustainability and longevity. And there needs to be an overall commitment to responsible tourism. We look for innovation. We look for application at scale. We know that there's often a tension between novelty and the evidence of impact between the new idea and the evidence that it works. And then we recognize those opportunities as uh, attempts to make things work better, as things to watch. Transparency and evidence are critical. The questionnaires and the supporting material are the evidence the, journal, the, the jury reviews. The judges awards are something even more special. These awards are rare. They're used to recognize businesses which achieve in multiple categories and which have previously recognized, been recognized by different judging panels for their excellence. The category was created in 2018 in order that the same businesses did not win year after year. To win in successive years, businesses have to have achieved something new. Only a few businesses can therefore win multiple times. Those businesses are outstanding. There have only been four winners. The first was in India. Since 2004, many Indian businesses have won. You can find them listed on our website um, of the Responsible Tourism Partnership and, and WTM. Two of the five judges' awards which have been awarded by the, by the judges are in India. They both happen to be in Kerala, Joe's Dominic of CGH Earth Hotels and Rupesh Kumar of the Kerala Responsible Tourism Mission. Now the Kerala Responsible Tourism Mission is something I think very special in international tourism. The idea of responsible tourism came to Kerala in March 2008. Um, at the second international conference on responsible tourism in destinations. The first was held in Cape Town and drafted the Cape Town Declaration in 2002. It's the 20th anniversary of that next year. The idea is simple. It's about making better places for people to visit and better places for people to live in. And you can find the, um, the, the academics can find the examples and, and the history of this in publications which are available online. But the Responsible Tourism Mission, which grew out of that second international conference, has really gone on to do outstanding work and is now being used as a model in other states in India. There's a real role here for academic research looking at the impact of this kind of work. We did some work with Rupesh Kumar, Jen Bobbin and myself did some work back in 2017 on tourism impacts in Kumarakuram and demonstrated the impacts that um, tourism was having on local livelihoods um, across one community, in this case, Kumarakuram. There's plenty of opportunities to repeat that kind of research. We did it again in 2018, looking at the impacts of Coconut Lagoon in particular in Kumarakuram. But there's really 
a lot of scope here for research by um, MSc students and PhDs and by faculty on the impacts of responsible tourism. Uh, fundamentally, the truth of tourism is that we always take our holidays in their homes. Tourism is unusual in that consumers have to travel to the destination, the factory if you like, to consume the product. We have to travel. We get brings us much closer to the producers of the services and the goods that we want to purchase, much closer to the producers and the workers. And that means that there are opportunities for additional sales of goods and services, complementary products, to use the jargon. Tourists essentially provide an additional market for locally produced goods and services and often one that's not competitive. So if you're, for example, a hotel or a lodge offering accommodation and you want people to stay longer because you make more revenue that way, locally provided experiences, village life experiences, craft products and local foods are all additional sources of revenue for the local community, which really don't compete with what you're wanting to provide accommodation. This is part of a broader consumer trend for the experience economy and authenticity well documented uh, by Harvard Business School. Tourism then is an opportunity, an additional market for a community, can provide resources for environmental and cultural conservation, it brings social benefits, but the value has to be captured. And here in Canada you see great examples of this with rural workers, rural families, achieving additional livelihoods income from tourism, not replacing their existing livelihood, but an additional income. This is in Uganda, um, where similar things happen up against the, uh, the boundary of Windy National Park, um, producing, in this case, um, revenue to sustain a women's refuge. So the potential local markets are those of independent travellers, group travels, travellers, and of course the tourism enterprises, including tour operators and accommodation owners, who need to buy crafts, soft, soft furnishings, farm produce, uniforms, etc. There are so many opportunities for local economic development through tourism. And we need to remember it's not tourism until it's sold, creating local value for local people. I'd like to see the development of a strong relationship between Amity, AITT, and the responsible tourism movement in India. I'd like to continue the engagement that's begun this year with the India Responsible Tourism Awards. I'd like to see case studies researched and published on responsible tourism in India. I'd like Amity to join the ICRT India. I'd like to see Amity contributing to the World Travel Markets Platform for Change, sharing proven best practice in achieving sustainability and using examples from the Platform for Change for teaching, sharing experience from around the world and promoting it in India. There are a lot of resources online. I really would look forward to being able to work with Amity, with the faculty and the students, the research students and the undergraduates, working together to understand more about responsible tourism and how we can make it work. I think there's a real opportunity here for a partnership between us to use responsible tourism to make the world better for people in the destinations that tourists love to visit. Whether those tourists are international or domestic tourists, they all provide an additional livelihood opportunity for local communities in the places which are visited by tourists. What we need to do is to generate much more expertise for governments and businesses about how to achieve this and about how to fashion tourism in ways which benefits local communities and brings the opportunities for local economic development broadly to communities. That's how the Responsible Tourism Mission in Kerala started. It started in part because the community, particularly in Kumarakoram, but not only there, was rebelling against the ways in which tourism was exploiting their communities and not contributing to their local economic development. Rupesh Kumar, Dr. Venu and others very active in the Responsible Tourism Mission, which has driven um, the development of economic growth 
and livelihoods for local communities across Kerala has had such success and is an international example of best practice. I hope that Amity will want to join with us in researching and promoting those activities. Thank you for listening to me this morning. I'm always delighted to speak at events organised by Amity. Thank you.